so a review of my mission, a summary. Um, my first area was called Sabana Grande de Boya, a little, a fairly large town, a few, probably a few thousand people, um, way out toward the northern reaches of the mission. I went to Santo Domingo itself, which is so big that they divide it into neighborhoods or barrios. I served in Los Tres Brazos, the three arms, because it's near a three branches of a river. Uh, I served in a place called Villa Esfuerzo. Well, really, I ser I, geographically, it was called Los Solares and La Toronja, but the, the mission called it Villa Esfuerzo. Then I served in a place called La Ureña, which is out by Los Molinos. It's right on the coastline, so I saw the ocean every day. Had to travel seven or eight kilometers um, to, from our house to our area, and it was a car ride, a taxi ride, or a bus ride along the ocean coast. Really beautiful. After that, I went out to one of the next biggest cities in the DR called San Pedro. I was right by the entrance to the city, San Pedro de Macorís. And from there, I got transferred out to a little podunk town of a couple hundred people called Gonzalo, where I ended the mission. Um, the mission itself, the Santo Domingo Este mission, is one of three missions in the Dominican Republic. There's the Santo Domingo Este, Santo Domingo Oeste, West, and the Santiago mission in the north. Um, the East and West missions split Santo Domingo right down the middle. Uh, one has the mission office on one side, the other has the mission office on the other side. Um, and then the mission goes up, for those of you who do any research into the DR and look at the geography, uh, the East mission goes through the middle of Santo Domingo, the Distrito Nacional. It goes up around Villa Mella, and then goes up and out around the province of Monte Plata. After going around Monte Plata, and then follows the northern coastline all the way around Punta Cana and back. It's the whole eastern side of the island. Um, the, the church has been around in the Dominican Republic for a long while. I don't remember any exact dates. I should have taken better notes in mission conferences and things like that. But, um, or I should review the notes, better said. The church showed up in the Dominican Republic in the uh, mid to late 70s, if I remember right. Um, it was a Dominican family that had moved to the United States, to California, if I remember right, and their meta church member um, came to love the gospel and then decided to move back to the Dominican Republic to share the gospel. Uh, and then this American brother and sister also went to the Dominican Republic to start missionary efforts, to start ha holding meetings in their home and things like that. That first member who who came from America, who was a member in America, who came over to the Dominican Republic to help out, is now the Santo Domingo Temple President, which is really cool. Um, in the Dominican Republic, they're a really, really religious country. As a matter of fact, they're the only country with the Bible on their flag. Um, their, their motto is Dios, Patria, Libertad, for God, for country, and for liberty and freedom. Um, about 50% of the country is Catholic, uh, and there are a lot of really, really active Catholics there. Um, the other 50% is divided between uh, Pentecostal and Evangelist belief systems. Uh, there's a lot of Seventh-day Adventists, a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses uh, thrown into the mix. In general, though, it's rare that you find a, Dominic a Dominican who doesn't believe in God in some way or another. Even the delinquents, the, the tigres who walk out in the streets uh, robbing people or doing whatever they do have a strong fear of God even if they don't really do anything about it. Uh, one of the, it's kind of an aside, but one of the nice things about walking through even dangerous parts of town like some of the places that I was in, uh, the tigres will leave you alone if they know you're a missionary or if they know that you are somebody who's serving the Lord. They won't mess with pastors, they won't mess with missionaries, they won't mess with priests, they won't mess with anyone who's dressed in Sunday attire generally. Um, which is really nice actually. It, it opened up a lot of doors. Sometimes they'd even protect you. You know, you get to be friends with them, say hi to them as you go by in the street, learn their names, learn their nicknames, and they would tell you not to go down, go a certain place because there, was, there were bad things happening over there, or they'd tell you, hey, I met somebody who might be interested in meeting you guys over here. It was really cool. In the East Mission, we had 11 zones and 9 stakes. 
there are a lot of members in the Dominican Republic, a lot of active members. We got a lot of good member, at least in all the areas I was in, we got a lot of good member support, a lot of people who were willing to work with us, willing to go out with us, willing to give us references, willing to help, and desirous to help. Not that we had to go by their house and say, hey, do you have any references for us? But they would come up to us and say, hey, I have this friend who I brought to church that I want you guys to meet. Um, definitely the best and probably only way to work effectively in the Dominican Republic as a missionary is to work through the members and to work extensively through the Book of Mormon because that's usually the turning point. Especially for a lot of these people who are Catholic and who are evangelist or Baptist, um, they believe that the Bible is the one and only Word of God and that it's all that God has said and it's all He'll ever say. And often they're not willing to listen to some foreigner or even someone from their own country but who comes to their door saying they'd like to share a message about another book of Scripture. If they have a member friend though, at least for the sake of the friendship, they're often willing to sit down and listen. Or they trust the friend enough to think that, you know, hey, maybe this friend knows what he's saying and I should listen. And as they start to read the Book of Mormon, everything changes. Uh, if you can get them to read the Book of Mormon, everything will change. Dominicans aren't big readers. They're not big leisure readers or readers in general. But and it takes some effort, but it's what will get them to make changes.